Okay, what's up everybody? George back at it. And then, uh, oh, let's see. International truck. Model number 4300 D466. As you can see, it's a fairly large diesel. I'm just going to point this out. This is the cable that goes to the parking lights. This goes over here. Terminal. That last terminal right over there. Get a poker. So you can see it better. That terminal right there controls it. However, in this model of truck, you don't have relays and other such things. This is actually controlled by MOSFET or um, solid state relay so to speak as you can see this box right here is where the lights plug into walk around here and I'm using a little bit of ingenuity uh, I've taken this apart and all this is is six push buttons that's it that's why they rock and it's got a mechanical uh, rocker to depress the buttons this is the only one that actually stays latched so as you can see it turns on the power it'll work the headlights the brake lights work the turn signal works the only thing that got ruined was the parking lights now the whole reason for this you come up to the back here someone welded this little cracked part of the frame. Now, they did a pretty good job welding it. However, you see these two lights? Well, that cable runs right there. Had they have taken the time, it sits right here. So, I mean, they could have pulled it out the way, disconnected the lights, cut the two zip ties that was holding up this cable, and uh, that's pretty much it. But, since they did not, they then proceeded to weld. The whole chassis was grounded, and once we, once it got grounded by the welder, that's what burned it out. So I've removed the cover that used to sit here, and you can see this is just to show you guys. This is the computer. There is nothing interchangeable here. The light switch, you see this right here, works off a of logic. It's got these thin little wires, and well, to be honest, they're like 22 gauge. So, this sends a signal to the computer, which is why I can run the panel lights. Now the parking lights don't come on at all. And well, the switch is disconnected, the cable's disconnected, so I won't get any. However, I'm going to leave this on. Well, we'll show you off first. So let's power on the meter. Off. And I'm now going to touch that last little terminal. You can see it's at zero. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you where I exactly I got it in there. There. That top left terminal, which I call terminal... Ooh. There's a number somewhere. So, here's my result of those terminals, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the turn signals, and you got various things like lights and uh, brake lights and whatnot. So, I'm just trying to figure out the parking lights, and uh, this was my result. So, that was terminal 4, and as you can see, in all positions, it was 0. I put the ignition switch to on, which would basically, essentially, reset this computer put it in a little bit of a force loop and hopefully that MOSFET would still have enough power to register. So, 
I have since just cranked that sucker on. Now, again, zero voltage. And I'm going to touch the terminal underneath it. So you can see there that one. It's 11.7. So I'm going to go right above it. And we now have 12.4. So now I'm going to try to set this up so that you can see it come on and off. I'm going to go wedge this sucker in here somehow. Now, as soon as you connect the parking lights, it kind of like burns out that MOSFET, like it, it overpowers it. It kind of goes into like its automatic shutdown. However, if you... Don't go the full power, but rather... There we go. So, there's that 12.4. Come around here, shut that off, zero. So then, now I got to think of a way how to actually switch on the lights. So went down to Radio Shack, picked me up a little 30 amp power cable with a fuse, and this takes the mini fuses, so let me take off this ring terminal. Okay, I've not bolted it down as you can see. I cannot do that one handed, it's very well in there. As you can see, it takes the mini blade fuses, not the regular size, standard. So even these have been swapped over. However, the nice thing is, they got a little LED and you can put it in either direction. You can, here's positive to negative. There it is, right? Now I'm going to take this and flip it over. I'm going to put this on the positive and this on the negative. And as you can see, it works still. So my guess is it's got a, a dual LED in here, a uh, bipolar LED, and uh, little resistors built in just so it can handle the 12 volts. However, when your fuse is burnt out, as you can see, there's no fuse in here. It indicates with the red light. Hey, I can do it one-handed that way. All right. Alright, um, many fuses. Now, I've already tested this and it works beautifully powering this small little relay. And let's see if I can sh demonstrate that. So, this I also picked up down at the local radio shack. So, I'm going to supply 12 volts here from the main line coming off here. Feed this relay. This relay will have its own smaller 2 amp fuse or 3 amp fuse because it's not going to use nowhere near that much power but <coughs> let me uh, ooh, let's see how am I going to do this too hard to do it one-handed but uh huh. yeah it's timed out oh it's off <laughs> there you go on oh, that would explain why it didn't work so let's uh move that here I forgot I was in the middle of that test so No problem turning on that relay as you can hear it. So, if this can switch on this relay, 
I'm going to use this relay to then power. It's going to pull power from here to. Um, okay, so the coil is powered by the vehicle itself in the original slot that this is going to go in. Replacing that, it's it's now instead of controlling the parking lights, it's going to control this relay. This relay will in turn put more power directly. A solid 12 volts to an automotive 30 amp, 30, 40 amp relay. And it's a single pole, single throw, SPST for those of you. And that means these two are the coils, which is 86 and 85, I believe. And yep, 86 and 85 are the coils. It's actually rated 60 amps. So it's a 60 amp relay, excuse me. This was the inline fuse holder that I got. There's that part number. Here's the automotive relay that I got. And this way you can get this anywhere. I mean, probably cheaper at AutoZone. But they only say 40 amps on here. Yet, it states 60 amps, as you can see, right there. Hmm. So, I would trust the numbers on Radio Shack over that one. This is actually rated... 15 amps at 125 volts, but well, those are some puny terminals, and this is probably meant for AC. This is not. These are beefy terminals meant for DC. So, AC, 15 amps, possible. I don't think so. I would probably think 10 amps would be more correct. <sighs> Gotta love these variable uh, standards, right? So, my music. Uh, just gonna hook this up here, pull power, feed this relay. This relay will then, uh, the center, um, here, let me go to the diagram here. Uh, no diagram on that one. And it's on the wrapper. There we go. So there's the diagram. Come on, focus. So once you apply power to the two outside ones, this center pole, which is separate, and I'm going to use that to feed 12 volts to actuate the next relay. It goes over here. And matter of fact, I think I'll just drop a schematic. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Fresh piece of paper. And I'm going to do this upside down and then turn it around for y'all. So, ground, which is negative, and this. Positive. We'll call that uh, headlight switch. Headlight switch. And that's actuated inside cab in cab. So the output of this used to go to used to go to the um, Headlights, and now I'm going to be running 12 volt DC tiny relay. I am now going to add. Use probably a 20 amp it should be sufficient maybe 30 amp and run this to a terminal this will then feed that 
that relay. So now this will then go to to this relay and that's poor drawing. open contact which is not used this will be the normally closed so I'm going to cut the original wire here and then use that to supply power to this relay I will add a small three amp fuse. This will be the 20 or 30 amp fuse. Here's the 40 amp relay. So here's that tiny relay that is now powered from that cut wire, it's going to come over here, feed this relay, this ground gets chassis ground, this terminal will be fed from this 30 amp fuse, white off from the main line, and that will then power this relay, this relay will then kick on the power, electromagnetic will pull this lever down, completing the contact and circuit here, providing the full 20 to 30 amps of power of the original wire that was cut in the first place. So, on with it, right? And uh, I'll pick up another video showing completed work.